You may be wondering, well, what in tarnation does he have on that mount? Well, this is an Explorer Scientific ultra lightweight Dobsonian telescope that has been modified to attach to an Orion Atlas Pro AZEQ, the result of an idea that I had three days ago. Check it out. Welcome once again to Dakota Starry Nights. We've got a really kind of neat project here, guys, and not sure if it's going to pan out, but the idea came to me from a public outreach we had about last week, and I had brought my 8-inch imaging Newtonian Explorer Scientific carbon fiber and put it on the, the Orion Atlas Pro AZEQ, and it was really neat to have that because uh, I was had 16 folks there and I was manning the uh, star party on my own and it was great to be able to have the tracking. So I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice if for those kinds of situations a guy could have tracking. If you've done star parties with a DOB, every minute or so, depending on the focal length of the eyepiece you have in there, you have to uh, step in, readjust, step back, let the folks take a look at it, uh, step in, uh, readjust, like the folks take a look at it. And that can be particularly tiring and frustrating, especially if there's a large group of people like I had at the Badlands National Park Astronomy Festival last year. Anyway, the 12 inches of aperture is pretty great. So I thought, let's remove the out bearings, which I've already done. Like I say, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I thought it'd be pretty cool, you know? I mean, if it does pan out, it would be pretty awesome. And uh, you can always go back to the uh, daub type situation if you want by putting those back. So I've drilled out the rivets here to remove the Mira cover. And this weighs 2.9 ounces. So total it was 45 with the cover and the alt bearings. So that takes 5 pounds off the whole package. I mean, I remember we got to put the truss poles and then the secondary mirror of the cage and the IP. So we're going to be pushing the maximum uh, capability of the Atlas Pro, and I'm not sure if it's going to work. It may or may not. But hey, you know, this is really worth a try if this does pan out. Hang in there. The next step I'm going to do is to put this AMD Los, Los Mandy plate right here. So that will ensure that the mirror supports will be working in the same manner that they would if the altitude bearings was here. And hopefully this will pan out. So the first thing I did was, for this Los Mani plate, which is 4 inches, it works out for the 12 inch to come over 5 and 5 eighths. And then I drew a square line to the bottom of the box with a carpenter square. This is Gen 1. I don't know if they've changed the structure of this at all but the upper frame for the mirror box is an inch and a quarter so it's five eighths down and then same bar is down here inch and a quarter and five eighths up with a perpendicular line drawn with a carpenter square here on the bottom we want to get some of these holes to go right through the center here so there'll be four bolts i'm not going to be able to hit it dead center because these holes are not spaced exactly the increment i need here so I'm going to have to split the difference some kind of way or re-drill these out here, which is probably what I'm going to do because this is going to be heavy. I don't want to monkey around with this. So I'm going to have to drill another set of holes here and here and countersink it. So I've got the holes drilled here, countersunk, and went to the local building supply and picked up a quarter by 20 by inch and a quarter long Allen stainless steel Allen head screw. Now when I say inch and a quarter that is from the shoulder to the end and that will allow it to clear through just giving you enough to put a washer and a 
lock nut. This is with a nylon ring at the end so that it doesn't come undone and a washer. So it's perfect size. So the next step is to get it lined up, centered on these center lines here and this edge on the square line that's perpendicular to the base. It's good to get it as accurate as possible so when you start doing your pointing on your Altaz mount. So I'm going to line this line, black pencil mark, split these here and there's a black pencil mark there in the center of this frame and then come in and drill it. But I'm just going to double check this. You only get to do this once. Yep, it looks pretty good. Because accuracy is of the utmost importance, I'm going to use a punch to put a little dimple there so the drill bit doesn't walk all over the place. There. Then, instead of jumping right to a quarter inch, I'm going to use a pilot bit to get it started so that we can maintain that accuracy. All right, we have the four holes drilled here on the side of the mirror box. And it's worth repeating, be sure you have your cover for your mirror while you're doing this. Uh, so you don't want metal flakes or accidentally drop one of these on there or anything like that. It's one of those things that, you know, a guy can forget. You get into the project and you're thinking about, you know, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And you forget some basic thing like that. And then, wow, you got a disaster on your hands. Now it's just a matter of bolt in the back. And again, what's cool about this is that if you want to go revert back to your Dobsonian uh, platform, you can. You pull this off, put your out bearings, drop it back in the mirror box, you're ready to go. That's if this works. <laughs> okay? You're seeing it live, ladies and gentlemen, as it's happening. All right. Getting the nuts on the Allen head screws down at the bottom is a little tricky because you got the mirror and you can't really remove the mirror. The way they have it, they have it attached to a sling that's glued onto the side of the mirror. So you can't lift the mirror out of there. Uh, so to get the washers on and the nuts on, I found that a long pair of these needle nose uh, tweezers works pretty good. And now a guy can just go to the wrench and hold it with the wrench and tighten it up. You want this plate as far up as possible. And the reason is that will allow you to counterbalance it on the mount. And I'd rather not add weight to it. I mean, you can, you know, but I'd rather keep this whole thing as light as possible and use the actual weight of the mirror in the mirror box as a counterweight. Another thing that's worth noting is that the Los Mandy plate should be on the left-hand side of the mirror box when you're standing behind the fans. And that will work on the Atlas AZ EQ Pro because the support for the mirror cell is designed to where the mirror is tipped in this position like this. So that means the clamp is going to be back here. The other thing I use uh, fender washers here as opposed to regular so I get more displacement and more support on this bar. And this aluminum bar here is not solid. It's a rectangular hollow bar. So you'll drill through one then there's a space and then you'll punch through the other side. So here it is mounted on the Atlas Pro, which by the way is the only mount that I know that this is going to work. This will not work on an equatorial mount. The reason is, is because the mirror support, and by the way you like this pointer, I got this from Harry Potter. It's one of the wands he wasn't using. <laughs> anyway, the, the reason is, is that the mount needs to go in alt as because the mirror support is made for the mirror to be moving in this way, not equatorially. So if you had this on an equatorial mount, the mirror would not stay in place, it would flop. So over here is the plate that I went ahead and attached to the side of the mirror box. This is MDF board right here. The plate I had was a 15 inch plate, but if you had like a 22 or 24 inch plate you could get this length that you need. If you have it this long you should be able to accommodate whatever you might 
have now or possibly in the future. As far as the counterweights go, I went ahead and put the extension on the bar here that it comes with and added a 10 pound counterweight. Actually a dumbbell weight is what that is. Although I could probably add another five pounds on there maybe, but it seems to work for now. Now this mount is rated at 44 pounds. That's visual, okay? And so this box, when you remove the alt bearings and I remove the, the cover for the mirror box, it brings this right around 40 pounds, somewhere in there. Now, it's my estimation that with the eyepiece, the trusses, the secondary cage, I'm probably pushing 55 pounds. Well, somewhere in there. So, I'm over the limit that it's rated at, but it seems to be operating fine. The other nice thing I like about this, as I had said earlier, this is totally reversible. <clears throat> You're not doing anything to it that you can't undo and go back. So the only thing I really had to do to it, outside of taking the cover off, was I had to drill four holes in the mirror box. Now if you have a lost Mandy plate and it's not quite long enough, you could always go with the way I did it here. It's bolted at the top with Allen head screws like you normally would do, and then bolts through here and on the bottom there's a frame that's here. I cover that in the shop, so if you go with this, I would recommend MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's not particle board and it's not plywood. It's a furniture grade uh, board and this is three quarter. And the reason why I say that is because it has no memory. In other words, it's not going to warp, it's not going to twist on you because it's a composite material and it's pretty strong and more than adequate for this application. But if you have to buy the plate, I'd go with like a 24 inch or somewhere in there to give you enough uh, leeway to go up and down with the mirror box until you get your sweet spot. The way I load this in, hey Harry, here's your wand back. <laughs> the way I load this in is in a horizontal, now, obviously without the truss poles or anything on it. And I open this up and this, this is not bad, I mean, at least for me, it's, it's doable. I open it up and then I put the lower lip of that Los Mandy plate in there and then tip it up, hold it, and tighten it up. Of course, with two guys, it's going to be easier, but I, personally, I didn't really find it such a big deal. It's just a matter of holding it close to your, you know, to, to your stomach and, and getting up to it and finding the right balance and just putting it in there. Then, once that's in, then I put it in a perpendicular position be sure your mirror cover on the bottom, your safety cover, is in there. If you don't have one, I highly recommend you make one and put it on there. And then just assemble it like normal. I mean, it, there's really no real difference to it. So when you go to put the shroud on, I got a two by two piece of wood here that's real handy. It keeps it from swinging around. There's no weight up right now because I don't have eye pieces or anything like that. So it tends to want to go up. And it's nicer to put the shroud on when it's low like that. So if you just cut your piece of wood uh, at a comfortable length, that really comes in handy for keeping this at sort of a horizontal position to get the shroud on. And this shroud was the shroud I had gotten with the Hubble UL-16. And I had to make another shroud using a denser fabric, but I'll be covering that in an upcoming video. So. Never throw anything out because you'll always find a use for it sooner or later. And it, as it turns out, this Hubble UL-16 shroud works pretty good for this Explorer Scientific Ultra Lightweight 12 because back here, it's open. And now that it's up off the ground, it's even more likely to get ambient light coming through the sides and the handles. Now if you did those mods I show in making the Explore Scientific Ultralight better, then you may have already made the magnetic foam sheeting that will stick to the back of this and on the sides. But if you haven't done that yet, or you're going to buy an Explore Scientific Ultralight, and thinking maybe down the road you might want to do this, then that's one way to do it, to have your, your light shroud big enough to where you can just roll it over, and I just use a clip here to clip it 
and that covers all the ambient light. While you're waiting for the mirror to cool down, the two fans are still here. I haven't taken them out. You can undo this end and just leave it to here so that the air circulates. And then when you come to ambient, just button it up and you're good to go. So I'd like to touch on a couple of the disadvantages of putting it on a mount as opposed to keeping it as a conventional daub. And that is the eyepiece is considerably higher now than it was when it was mounted as a Dobsonian telescope. I typically could do most of my viewing just standing on the ground and maybe a few objects at zenith, uh, maybe a little step stool about that high, but most of it was done on the ground. But now, because of the way this is, you need to have a step ladder. The other thing, as you can imagine, because it's so heavy and you have this big weight out here, it takes about a second or two for it to settle down to where you can look through the eyepiece. So that's another disadvantage. And then the go-to's aren't quite as accurate as they were using a conventional telescope, a schmidt cassegrain or a refractor with this mount. Obviously the mount is being taxed beyond its rated capability to, to you know, a fair degree or so. That's another disadvantage of having this scope on there. The main advantage I see of having it on the mount is the tracking, but then you can get an equatorial platform. This is just something to spark imagination and maybe it's something you like to do experiment with gear and try different configurations, you know, and there's a big uh, plus to that side of it. But there are other ways to have a mount track and setting circles or digital setting circles are a great way to find your targets. I'm not a big fan of the Dobsonian mechanical go-to. I prefer simplicity, fast and furious, that's where I'm at. This, however, this was more of an exercise of an idea to see if it could work and uh, it's panned out. So it's been pretty cool and a lot of fun in that regard. Well guys, that's it for this workshop. I hope you enjoyed it or that it sparked some ideas or maybe even this idea. Until next time, keep a polar aligned and clear skies.